Victor I'm here with the part fourth on the painting tutorial of the Vermin Lord. So it's been quite a, a long tutorial, but I want to do it with uh, good detail. And now we are going to do the glaive, okay? Uh, and I want to glue the glaive, and then once I know where the glaive goes, uh, do the base as well. Okay, so in this part we are going to focus on the glaive and on the orb. But before starting, I just want to share with you, uh, if you want to support this channel, please give a like, subscribe if you are not subscribed and you want to see more tutorials, and uh, comment. All this support is very welcome and helps in, for, uh, in growing, and also give a little bit of uh, moral uh, injection to the, to, to the people that is doing the videos. Okay, uh, you also can support me in Patreon if you want, and I also start a, a lineup of products related to the miniatures. It's mainly some merchandise uh, of the channel and also related, of course, to what I paint. So if you think that this is fancy and it's something that you would like, you are very welcome also uh, to purchase something. Um, so that's all for now. And now let's start uh, with the painting tutorial or let's continue the painting tutorial of the glaive. So next step, I'm going to work on the metallic part here, uh, if you want to, I will use uh, against worship metal, okay, and I will use the typical iron breaker. We can start with a lead belcher. Yeah, I will use lead belcher, so I will go for a. I will start with dark metallic, and we are going to do this on on the two blades, okay, uh, of the glaive. I'm going to play this here. Uh, I will not do on the stones, but I will not pay too much attention. The thing that you don't want to do at this moment is the gold, okay? Because the gold will radiate the wash and we wanted to keep it clean, okay? So I do here and I will do the other side of the blade and I'm back once this is done. So while the metallic on the glaive is drying, we are going to work on the orb and I'm going to use no mood green, it's a very light green and we are going to apply this on the crevices we have on the on this orb, okay? What we are going to do is we are going to make this crevices very light, very bright then keep the rest of the orb dark, okay? So we are going to, for example here, we'll apply it And don't worry if it's not perfect when you're doing that, okay? We are going to we will need to clean up this later on. But what is important is that you follow all these crevices, all these uh, patterns that we have on this board. And we do them all with this bright green. See, I'm doing this. I'm not going to do this vertical line now. Up to this point. And I keep doing. You can see that the lines are a little bit thicker than the slot. I go a little bit out of the slot. This is not going to be a problem. So later on we are going to clean up and it's helping because we want we want this to look like the, the impression of glowing. So we will keep doing that. 
Okay, so I do. All this is a lot. And I'm back when I'm done. Okay, maybe uh, you did not realize I have to know, but as you can see, I have put the stone here. Uh, instead of putting the feet on top of the of the glaive, I prefer to put the stone. But now there is a problem that I did not realize when I was doing that. Uh, that we have this uh, thing here that is not decorated, that the other parts. So I will I will do something there later on. But now I will work on the glaive, and you can see even the glaive should go a little bit light. I am back okay so we can glue it here we will need to glue it here and then we will force it a little bit and everything will go well so there isn't a problem and i like more with the stone i don't know what do you think so let's focus on the glaive i will focus on the bottom part from here from this part here okay to the bottom i will focus now on the glaive uh, you can see this is going to be dry and will look, will look nicer later on okay but uh, let's do this and we have to do the um, earthy part of of the of the glaive because we want to do some dry brushing and I don't want to dirt the the rest of the glaive so uh, we are going to apply as we did on uh, before a dark brown okay I'm going to apply dry bark on this thing. Okay, on this piece of mud. Okay, or land, or what you want to call it. And we need to wait that this dries. But this, while this is the why we are waiting, I'm going to do uh, one thing that will consume quite a lot of time and it's quite far from this part. So I'm not concerned that we are going to dirt it. I'm going to take a lighter brown. Okay, you can take. A, we'll start with a uh, gother brown. Okay, so this was the base color that is lighter than. And we are going to start applying this like that, okay? With a thinner, like this brush a little bit too thick. Let's take a little brush. We are going to do like that, okay? And see, I'm doing this well, and then we need to take beam blade brown. And this is going to be quite a time consuming, so this is why we can do this while the other part is drying. So we have to be careful not to put, um, wrap off the paint, but with the beam blade brown, but I want to do is. do this okay so we do no taking the account of this upside down but we do the top edge of one of each of each of these things and I keep in gotha brown because in case I go too too thick then with gutter brown, I clean up. And I have to say here it's easier than in the, what we did in the tail, because I I have here here the definition 
is better and it's much easier to see how you do that okay you can see I'm doing the first this side okay now I turn a little bit and I keep following it turn a little bit more and you can see that I already arrived to the other side okay okay I will do this section in camera and you can imagine that the rest of the parts here I put too much, this is why, I, I, as I said, I want to keep Gothel Brown next to me. And I just smooth. And now we do this part. Chuck, chuck. Okay, and now we do the other one, okay? And we'll repeat the same operation. I think here at this point you understand what I'm doing, okay? So I will do this for all the handle of the glaive and I will be back to continue with the next step okay this hole cool looks like no the glaive okay you have all the all this highlighting done and we are going to go back to the bottom so I'm going to apply uh, let's say that glaive first I'm going to apply I'm going to apply dark grey on these small stones. So it's going to be ashen grey. You can use any grey that you want. This one, I give the colors as a, as just as a to give an idea of what type of grey I'm using. You can see this is a dark grey. We do this in stones. And again, we need to wait that this dries. So while this is drying, I'm going to paint the warp stones that we have there. Okay, so I'm going to. Uh, I will wait for the warp stones, I think, and I will do the wash on the gold. And to the wash on the gold, I'm going to use uh, again built and green. Remember, we have done one wash with plate um, was regular flay shade, and now we apply built and green. This color is going, I will use it. I like to give this green shade on all the gold on all the brushes just to give this metal a different look if it's pulling here like that just go there it's not a problem we are going to give a filter of green as well in this area because we have the warp stones so if you go a little bit there it's not a problem 
Okay, but don't let the, this to flow now because we need to do other work first. Okay, you see, now completely change the color. And we do the same for these rings. But this is too much, of course, for our small ring. Okay, and here I take to avoid to go on the brown part as well, okay? This is going to be very similar to what we have done on the table. So I will finalize this goal, this green, and I come back. Okay, next step, I'm going to do some dry brushing here. I will finalize this piece of terrain that we have there. So I will apply downstone gray as the as dry brush. I will go quite heavy, not too much. Bit. Now I'm going to apply Racker Fresh Shade. Okay, just like that. Okay clean because we will use the same brush to know we are going to clean up this later on okay but I want to have this done so later on we are going to just run. and now I'm taking more from brown I will go You can see I go quite heavy with the dry brushing. Next, we are going to apply a black wash on, on the glaive, okay, on the metallic. So I'm going to use loom oil, we'll do just one side and then, yeah, I will, no, I will, yeah, I will do that. Yes. Thinking because I wanted to, so I will apply just this one here. I'm not too concerned on where we have these warp stones put. I'm more interested in having the shade on the bottom part of the blade. Okay, or something like that. And here I want to be sure that I have what I wanted. Okay. Okay. We wait now that this dries. And while this is drying, we can. As we have been done several times, we can now work on the orb again, okay? Uh, we are going to change here technique. I'm going to take smaller brush. I'm going to take warpstone glow, okay? This green. And we are going to go next to the slots. What that means? Let's take the miniature. Take a part that I can show well in camera. Fair, this warstone is. I have a new warstone, I think, yes. Pass the old one. Too thin 
for the job I want to do here. Okay, take the Warston and I go next to the UV. something like that. And don't worry if it's looking too thick. We are going to thin down this later on. Okay. Now what is important is that we leave the light green thin. Okay, we, want, we want to leave this light green again thin. To do that, we may save them a little bit there. Okay. here I do this like that <coughs> sorry so I guess no you are getting the idea of what I'm trying to do, right? Just leaving the very clear yellow really deep in the recess. lines okay so I will do the rest of the lines and I come back okay this is how it looks like now and I will add a little bit more um, yellow on the more bright more brighter parts and I will use this from Vallejo that is um, yellow green okay it's like a fluor green and we are going to put this on the spots where I want it to be more I want to so I'll go here for example. I'll do this cave and symbol. And then I will do some other parts. For example, we can add here on the arrow. To create the shape. We don't need to add it everywhere. Just where you think it's adding value. And it's going to be where we have corners, arrows. And I will focalize on the top part of this thing. Okay. 
Okay, something like that. We are going to clean up a little bit and add a little bit of mood green. Very gentle just to make a little bit of filter and kill a little bit the yellow to, 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 to give it just like that. Okay, and now we'll clean up with Warpstone. Okay, and what I'm going to do next, I'm going to take a darker green, so you can use for example, you can use even Kabbalite green, it's quite dark, okay, and it's bluish, and we can add it just after the glow green and go down. make it um, disappear or fade out when we get to the bottom and far from these lines Okay, you see. Something like that. Okay, you see we have the orb now done. So we can go back to the glaive and we are going to do the warp stones now. Okay, so I'm going to paint these warp stones with warp stone blow first. side now we take mood green
I'm friendly with the yellow. I mean the green yellow that I would have used before. Green. We do like a edge highlight. back to more green and we'll do like that and we do the same on the other side and I come back so right to this point I'm going to use no uh, way way watcher green and we are going to glaze these stones and on top we are going to go in the crevices and let it go you see we go out we let this flow into the crevices giving a green glare One is going to be very light. I'm going to give a later on one more with with brush with wash. Sorry. Uh, once we have the contrast paints, I guess this type of technique will change a little bit. I think contrast paints will help us here. Okay, we are going to use now. You can see I will do the same here. Okay, what is we need to do? Leave no horizontal. Okay, so I will now wait this device and I come back. Okay, this whole looks like after the previous glaze have dry. I'm not going to play a second white, it's going to be Coelia green shade, and I will apply this around the uh, the stones, okay, the wash stones. So we are going to uh, increase the the green effect here. Okay, this will go darker. And the intention is to shade a little bit more this part. Okay, we are going to do the same on the other side. We want to enhance this cracking. Okay. We're going to add some more shading here. And I will go like that. Okay, I will do the same thing on that side. Okay, now here I will not wait that this rise, 
because I want I will start working on the highlights on this silver. So I'm going to use room funny steel, or we can use even a stone host armor. Or oh, stone host is called is the other. I think it's this one here I have. So you can use stone host silver. Sorry. Okay, any of the two for me it's okay. I will use room funk steel in that case. And first I will do the edge. Okay. I'm going to do this edge as well. Or this. Okay, and now we are going to do and we are going to do it well here. Here we go shoulder, something like that, and on this side I will go full with a darker color. Okay, I'm going to do the same here. So we do this, follow this shape, okay, now I will turn it because it's much easier and we are going to do the same type of effect. Okay, put it here and here. And now I go to the other side with an iron breaker, for example. Okay. And with iron breaker, let me just We are going to do the other edge. Here. Here. And we do the same effect. from the other side okay and here we have now on the crevices with the same iron breaker I will just go very thin touch the upper edges of these crevices. As you can see, just follow some of these crevices on the, I go for the below, just below. Something like that. The same on the other side.
Okay. And now we are going to apply a couple of washes again. <coughs> Sorry. I will apply first another glaze of green. So to um, blend a little bit this super bright highlight with the rest of the green. And now I'm going to use moon oil. Just to this is because I realize that if you just apply the the highlights and you don't put noon oil on top, then these parts will look very bright in future. Okay, the light will reflect in a very weird way, so it's better to put this noon oil on top. Just as a filter and to kill a little bit the brightness. Okay. And now we wait for this to dry. Um, we are, uh, once it's dry, we are going to work on the spikes. So while this is drying, I will prepare. I want to do one thing on the tail before uh, gluing the glaive because the glaive will go here in front of the tail and it will difficult a little bit the access. I was thinking how to do these small spikes this guy have on the tail and I decide to go <coughs> for something greenish. So I will use Caliban Green as a base color and I'm going to apply this on all the spikes okay so this is going to be again a quite consuming work but we want to apply this Caliban Green on all the spikes right and to be fair this has not too much mystery is just go straight by the spike. And you you do some in one side and then you turn, and you'll be sure you have to be sure that they are painted from all the sides. You do one tail and then you do the other tail, and you just go spike by spike, ensuring that the spikes are completely on green. Okay, so I will do that for all the spikes, and I come back. Okay, I have done the spikes and now I will do also these ones here on the on the glaive with the same green. So with Caliban green we are going to do as well these ones here. Okay. So we do Turn. We do the other side. Okay. Now I'm going to use um, Warstone Glow. from the top to down And we do the same from the other side. Here 
Yeah, that I went to match down, I will play again Caliban Green. Here we with this device, but we'll talk. So that I normally have to the moment I have to do the correction where I have a mistake. Okay. So we leave this dry. In the meantime, and we're going to do all the spikes as well on the on the tail. This time we're going to do it at the top. Okay. From one side, and then from the other. It's pretty fast. Okay, so I will do all the spikes like this once, and I'm back. Okay, we have done here all the small spikes on the tail. Okay, we are going to do the second highlight, and now I'm going to use Mood Green. Okay, and we are going to apply this on these spikes, starting from the tip again, and going down, okay. We use this edge we have here, okay, something like that, and yeah, this is one. This is one more than enough. Can do a little bit if you want. And here I'm going back, down. Sorry. Okay. Okay, so this is done, and now we are going to do the same, not exactly the same, but we are going to work as well. We can do, I want to do this green, so I will, I will take advantage that I have the mood green here, and I'm going to paint this thing, okay, with mood green. Okay, we are going to paint this, that will give a base color, I will not do it this all on camera because it's, it's not adding too much value. So just take into account that I will do also this part on with Mood Green. And then we are going to go and touch just the tip of all these spikes. Okay? So we go and we go from the top, we touch the tips. And by touching the tip you will see that you will you will go also to the sides. Okay, so I do all this, I do the base color on the decoration on the glyph and I come back. Okay. This is how it looks like now, once I have done the spikes and I have glued here. I'm still in the process of gluing the uh, clay uh, on the base, uh, it will solve this problem. But I will finalize the tutorial here, where I will now glue the clay and I will come back uh, for the next part of the tutorial. Uh, just now just to focus on the head and the final details to finalize the miniature. So this whole looks like uh, almost all the parts glued. I will do the head separated. Here we have, and the head will go 
there okay so we are going to uh, work uh, on uh, a next uh, another part most likely uh, the fifth and the final part will be the next one so I hope you have enjoyed this uh, fourth part on the tutorial of the Vermin Lord uh, please leave in the comments below what do you think on the paint job so far uh, on this uh, second part we focus on the a glaive uh, on the orb so we are going to do now the other details in the next one that's all for now as usual thanks a lot for watching and see you later bye